Hello crafters, this is Gareth from G's Creations and welcome to day two and video number two of my Christmas card series. Yesterday um, we made this one together. We made that one together. Now today we are going to be making this one here. Now I'm going to be making one without the shaker card element. Um, this, this particular shaker card element is very different to what we're used to. So I'm going to go through that with you um, today. I'm going to be doing two of these cards with you. One with the shaker card, one without. So just to show you these. This one is the um, heat embossed. And this one is with the embossing folders. So it's just two different variations of it. So this one's got the indentation of the snowflakes. But this one's got the heat embossed. So I've, I'll have all the measurements below. So for um, purpose of videos and things, just because I'm doing two with you, I've already cut this to the uh, required shape and size. So I'll have all the measurements below in the video. So the first thing I want to do on this one is to emboss the snowflakes. So I'm going to be using my top boss emboss, embossing pad. So I'm going to use that one. Make sure it's pressed firmly and evenly. Turn this piece of paper over because obviously there's um, embossing. I don't want this gold. Actually, this is the Wow Metallic Brass. As you know, this is one of my favorites. So I'm just going to Sprinkle this all over the images. And then I shall put the excess away and then heat emboss it and then I'll be right back okay, with that's you. now done. Now these punch these holes here I, I used my two inch circle punch. So this is exactly the same size card that I'm going to place underneath and lightly draw and lightly draw the inside of this circle, draw around the inside of this circle very lightly, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm not going to rub it all out anyway. And that just gives me an idea of where my stamp can go. Now using the snowman from Memo Made It Stamp Set um, Snow Peaking and using my stays on. Now I've re-inked my stays on so I'm hoping for a better image this time. I'm going to test it on the back of this card just to see how the image, because this is going to be glued to the card anyway. Oh that's much better, much much better. So I'm just going to ink this snowman and that was, I'm using stays on and because I drew the, the circle it gives me an idea of where the snowman can fit and I'm not worried about him coming off the page oh that didn't come out so well <laughs> the first one on the back came out lovely but this one not so well typical Gareth typical Okay, let's try again. Try and get it all in the same, in exactly the same spot. Not so bad. Okay, now using some Tim Holtz Distress Pens and some Spectrum Noirs, I'm using the LG3, the LG4, and the CG4. Now the CG4 is the darker one so I'm going to use the darker one just to shadow and to give the uh, the scarf and the gloves and the hat some shadow I'm no expert by all, by any means in regards to the Inspection Noir, but I do like using them. Now, which one did I want to use? 
Is it that one? Yep, it's this one. Now going over the darker shade that you just put onto the card, as well as the rest of of the uh, of the hat, because what it does, it blends them together. As I'm sure you're all, you're, you you know you all know that already. But for those of you that don't, okay. Now using my um, distress markers, and this is barn door. I'm going to use that to colour in the the berries. I'm using spice marmalade for the for the nose and I'm using old paper for the leaves because I don't want them to be green because obviously the hat's green so I'll do them slightly different colour. Still a natural tone but, but obviously different. Now I'm going to put this one back over the top because obviously as you can see he fits nicely and I'm going to pencil in the bottom one also again very lightly and it doesn't have to be perfect and using the snowflakes from the stamp set I'm going to give the background um, some some texture as well as give it a sentiment so this I'm going to use slightly different sizes of the snowflakes and I'm going to come on and off the page what sentiment do I want will that fit well there's no one like you will that fit on there let's give it a whiz Yeah, that should fit. Okay, the bottom didn't quite didn't quite work as well. Obviously take more care and press correctly when you're doing yours. So rub off these lines or so rub out these lines oh I apologize if I was out of frame for that last part okay so it will be something like that so using my good old trusty art glitter glue. I'm going to adhere these two pieces together. I think my nozzle might be slightly clogged, excuse me, crafters. Having my using my board to help me line this up. Sorry, I'm a bit of a shaker when it comes to these things. Let's 
slight overlay just here, so I'm just going to cut that away. And using some double sided tape. slightly too long. Okay, I got my card base, and again, being very careful. Okay, there we go. So that's that one. So that's that one, and now we're going to do the one with the uh, the shaker element. So that's one done. Now I've got my bases again. Now I've, I've done this with a slightly with the curved. Now to get those um, edges, I've used both of these um, punches. Now this is the angle and photo, and the half inch um, round edge. So I've got two pieces here again. So using using my two inch circle punch, punch circle at the top circle at the bottom and for this one I am going to use the snowflakes that come with the stamp set and I'm going to what color shall I use a different color let's use red let's use blazing red so I'm going to use blazing red and I'm going to get a piece of paper so I can come off the edges. I always think it's very important to get some of your image so that come off and on the paper. I think it makes it more realistic as if they're meant to be there. That one, yeah, one of my favorite ones. I love this snowflake in this particular stand set. Very traditional, very traditional um, snowflake, the one I'm using now. Again, doing the same thing with the circle just to give me some indication of where I can and can't go with the um, images and the stamping. Put my stays on back. Before I go any further, I just need to round the edges on this one. So I'm going to be using the half inch on my so corner edge punch. That's the half inch. And I'm putting both the pieces of paper together just to make it easier. Okay. 
to the jet black stays on. Hoping this one, um, I get a better image with this one. I'm going to come to an angle with this one. Much better. And with this one, I'm going to be using the reds. I'm going to be using DC7 and CR11. So same thing as I've done with the with the green. I'm going to use the darker one to give the elements of this image some shading. And I'm going to use the distress marker tumbled um, tumble glass. I'm going to use tumble glass for the the ribbon part of the hat. Okay, so now I'm going to use the CR11 to go over the colours, the shading. Very vibrant red. I do. I do like this red. Back to the um, spiced marmalade for the. Carrot nose. And the barn door for the berries. It is barn door, isn't it? Yes, barn door. I want to make sure I'm giving you all the correct information. And back to the old paper for oh, wrong side. Okay, that's that one. Now the slight the, the thing that I'm going to do different with the shaker element is usually we encase um, the shaker elements, but this time I'm going to be using one of these um, resealable plastic bags. Now obviously I have a lot of these because I use them in my store, and um, you can buy um, snow, fake snow, but I have used powder in my shaker elements. I have used salt. I have used sugar. Obviously, you have to be very, very aware that a lot of those things, if they get wet, they are going to either dissolve or they're going to solidify. So I'm going to use some sugar in this shaker card. Uh, and the thing about sugar, it does have the resemblance of the fake snow that you can buy because it has the, you know, it has the glistening elements to it. So I'm just going to put a few pinches of salt, uh, salt, a few pinches of sugar in this bag because this bag will become the shaker element on this particular card. I'm also going to put in some sequins, not loads. Some loose gold glitter. loose red glitter and some red star sequins okay so that's the shaker element done you can put more sugar in if you wish. So it has that that kind of effect. Now, this is going to be sellotaped to the uh, 
to this part here but I still want to um, put some kind of sentiment or maybe just some of the stars in the background there just so there's um, consistency through the um, through the through the bag so going back to my blazing red and I'm just going to just pop in they don't have to be perfect because obviously they're going to be behind the shaker element I'm going to put the sequins and things kind of in the middle of the bag because using some double sided tape I'm going to adhere it to this this piece of cardstock See this all this would get hidden behind when we sandwich it in between this and the card base this is just a really simple way for any of those any of you out there that are intimidated by shaker cards now I do make shaker cards using the traditional fashion but I just um, I had this idea and then my good friend Michelle from um, shell bear creations she done this on her channel and it was just exactly what I had in my head. So I actually saw it live and saw how easy it was and how much it works. So thank you for um, that, Michelle. It was nice to see it go from it being in my head as an idea to see somebody else have the same idea and actually create it. So it was very useful for me. So thank you for that. So I won't take full credit for this idea because, um, you know, Others have had it, I'm sure, and I know Michelle from Shell Bay Creations did. So, taking off all this the backing paper, let me get my pick. I love this pick, it's great for this thing, for doing this. Right, take all this off. Okay, I've got the double sided tape off. And I'm adhering this to the the other base. And just in this corner I'm adding some if my glue will stop clogging up. Adding some glue to the to the base here. Just because obviously it's a bit bulkier here because of the uh, the shaker element. have the shaker part which is all self-contained in the bag now it's time to adhere it to the back to the base some of the scraps I'm going to use another one of the sentiments now let's have a look we have got uh, I'm going to do thank you snow much which is one of my favorite sentiments from this particular set, uh, stamp set so using my my work surface to lay that out actually I think I might do it so it's kind of like that because obviously it's a long piece of paper so actually you know what I think I might do it lengthways I'm going to do it lengthways I think 
Thank you so much, yes. And I'm going to use the, uh, the red stays on. I'm going to do thank you so much. And the snow much didn't come out so well. I need to remember to have even pressure. I'm just going to move it down so my head doesn't get in the uh, in the way. going to have that poking out from the side here so I don't need all of this again using the art glitter glue pop this on the side there make sure it's straight which it isn't And then we have it. Nope, we don't have it. It's still not on right. I'm not satisfied. So there we go. That's card number two. So there's lots of ways you can do this card. And tomorrow we move on to this card here. If I can find it. And tomorrow we go on to this card here. So thank you for joining me today. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care now.